What's up, my wizards? It's Dev. SVMTG. We like magic. We keep doing that. I like it. Anyway, in case you hadn't heard, today was the final day of Modern Horizon spoilers. The dump, as they like to call it, because it's like 60 or 70 lower rarity cards, but the dump is a fitting name because like most of the cards are crap. That you see on the last day, but there's some, some some diamonds in the rough in there, you know. So to save you a little bit of time, that's a thing that I'm doing for you. I went ahead and went through all the cards they dumped today, and I've chosen 20 that I want to show you more than any of the other cards. So today, sort of loosely, my top 20 cards from the final day of Modern Horizon spoilers. Let's go. Well, every list deserves an honorable mention, so I'll start this one out with Iceberg Cancrix. This is two mana. One in a blue for a 0-4 Snow Crab. Delicious. And whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. So this is a lot like another crab we all know and love. <laughs> it's a meme at this point, but this is a lot like Hedron Crab. Now, Crab, the original Crab, <laughs> the OG Crab, gets you um, three mils, you know, whenever you landfall. But this might actually be a little bit better, even though it only mills you, you know, lets you mill two cards. This triggers off of way more permanent types, you know. If you're playing nothing but Snowlands in your snow deck, this is going to trigger, like, landfall, you know, anyway. But <laughs> it also triggers off of enchantments, artifact, creatures, all that kind of stuff, too. So you can actually get way more mills in a given game out of an Iceberg Cancrix, and I, I think that's kind of good. I'm not saying Hedron Crab is the best card ever printed, but this is a really good callback that I think might actually be able to do some work in, like, casual decks. So I wanted to at least shout it out, but starting the list, if we can call it that, again, this, this is a loose, loose list, it's hard to say, loose list sink, sh sink ships. I can't actually rhyme or I'll get demonetized. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's look at Bogarden Dragonheart real quick. This is three mana, two, and a red for a 2-2 two, two human shaman. And when you sacrifice another creature, until end of turn, Dragonheart becomes a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4 four, four flying and haste. So it's like an Antuco husk that doesn't have, like, as huge of a threat of activation. You know, if it goes unblocked, it can't just deal, like, 12 damage out of nowhere. No, it might not get as big as a husk. It can fly, and husk never does that, in, you know, unless you put an aura on it or something. But still, I like this. As far as, like, free sack outlets that call back to Nantuko husk, I like it a lot. But next up, Cave of Temptation. This is just a land, taps for a colorless. You can pay one and tap it to add a mana of any color, which is good for your fixing purposes. And you can pay four and tap it and sacrifice it to put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. But you can only do that anytime you can cast a sorcery. Now, I just bring this card up because it's interesting to me. Like, most of the cards today won't see, like, major play, especially, like, you know, from 20 to 10. We're not really looking at, like, world-ending format bending cards or anything like that, but this is at least cool. You know, it's common. I don't know if it's going to have any, you know, major play in popper. I really, really doubt it. Looks really slow for that format, but again, for, like, casual mana fixing or for, like, budget commander players, this is a good way to have a land that produces all the colors and has an ancillary effect when you no longer need the fixing of it, you know? And it might go pretty well in, like, proliferate decks or other decks that are looking to put counters on creatures and then exploit those counters somehow or increase those counters somehow. Cave of Temptation has, again, just like the last card, a few different angles that you can look at it from, you know, if you're trying to look at different ways you can use this card or play this card. There are definitely some niches that it fits into, but again, I don't think this is, like, a super important land at the end of the day, but it's worth pointing out. But up next, let's look at Twin Silk Spider, which is a lot like a spider we saw just yesterday and that it's only I'm one of the only people excited about it. But we did have Spider Tribe rep in the in the comments section. I had a few of y'all stand up and be like, Spider Tribe? So maybe I'm not the only one excited for some junk like this, but this is three mana, two and a green for a one-two spider with reach. And when it ETBs, you get a second copy of it. Just create another one-two green spider token with reach. So this is, again, like pretty good in the Ishkana deck. You know, it's relatively low on your curve. It creates two spiders, so it works really well with um, Rot Widow Pack, the spider that we just saw yesterday. And obviously it works sort of well with Ishkana too, you know. Just anything that allows you to increase the number of spiders you have on the battlefield is going to be good with either of these activated abilities so really like to just have another piece for the spider commander deck they've thrown us a couple of bones this season thanks wizards i also want to take a look at rhyme tender here this is technically number 17 although like Again, especially like 2310, you just order these in any random order, doesn't really matter, <laughs> but still. Rhyme Tender looks kind of cool to me, you know. Just two mana for this effect is okay as long as it's untapping a land because it's effectively just a two mana ramper. With a decent body, I mean, you know, a couple of mana, or a couple of powers, fine. 
Um, but what I really like about this is when you have like multiple copies of them out, you can just like infinitely untap them, you know, like use one to untap the other, use the other to untap the other, you know, and you can just like, I don't know, there's really not much you can exploit <laughs> while doing this, but I guess there's like quests for renewal, you get, you go ahead and get like, um, the ability on that, you know, untap all your creatures every turn, so that seems like it could actually work out pretty well, and if nothing else, this would just give you like extra activations on scrying sheets in your snow deck, like, there's a few things this can do, so I want to point it out. But up next, Face of Divinity, 3 mana, 2, and a white for an aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus 2, plus 2. As long as another aura is attached to enchanted creature, it has first strike and lifelink. So this is basically Daybreak Korra Knot, you know. But it still might go into, you know, the odd Commander Aura's deck here and there, the odd Commander Enchantress deck. And, you know, if you're on like a really low budget and you're trying to play yourself some modern... <laughs> You know, maybe this works itself into your Enchantress deck, but I really doubt it. This looks like it's more of, um, you know, a Commander thing than a Boggles thing, you know? But still, I think the card is really worth taking a look at at the very least because, you know, almost Daybreak Coronet is a pretty good card. Now, just to be brutally honest here, there weren't like a whole lot of red cards that really, you know, sparked my interest today. And really the last one that I thought was worth pointing out was Vyashino Sand Sprinter. I had a lot of fun back in the day with um, Vashino Sand Stalker, and it you know it used to be this like mini ball lightning thing, and the trade off for it not being as big as ball lightning was easier to cast, and you can cast it multiple times rather than ball lightning just dying the turn you play it. Um, Vashino Sand Stalker is obviously not the best card in the world, but at least this is a cool nostalgic um, kind of callback, and the uh, added trample on it is pretty nice too so I'll take that pretty much any day I don't necessarily care for the you know one point of lower toughness but what I really like about this is the cycling that just makes it way better than its Vyashino cousins you know like this can attack once or twice or whatever do a couple of points of damage pop back to your hand and then just cycle it away when it's no longer relevant and that's really really cool and this can be relevant in a number of situations I like that it's common so it's popper playable even though I'm not really sure it's gonna see any play in that format I do just like the amount of stuff you can do with this you know it's never completely bad because you can play it kind of as a burn spell and if your opponent can block it you're probably gonna get through at least a point or two of trample damage so you can play it kind of like a ball lightning like you used to be able to do that but now you know if you've gotten to the point where you either can't play it at all or you can't play it anymore just cycle it away and I actually think that especially at the price of one mana to cycle it that's a really really good deal so I don't think the card is gonna like change the face of literally any format I'm not even sure that it's truly popper playable but there is so much that I like about the card just upon first reading I think that I at least want to point it out you know like the new perspectives deck isn't really a modern deck but it's a fun casual deck and people have been trying to make it work in modern for a couple of years now so this might be a good piece for it because that those decks are always looking for one mana cycling creatures um better slightly better than the last one mana cycling creature that it played so it might see some fringe play in that otherwise i doubt it it's just a really interesting card but at, I guess we'll call it number 14 here. We got to see Trustworthy Scout. This is two mana, one and a white for a 2-2 human scout. You can pay one and a white and exile it from your graveyard to search your library for a card named Trustworthy Scout. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. So this is actually, it seems like a really good graveyard ability to me, you know. In the end, it's going to cost you four mana to go grab a bear. You know, if this is in your graveyard, you have to pay the two exile it, go search up another one, then pay the two to cast that one. I don't know, man. Like, it's just a bear. It's just a two-mana two-two, but at least it's got a decent creature type, if nothing else. But, again, this is one of those where I'm not really sure how much mainstream play it sees, but it could be popper, you know, playable. Like, this is actually really interesting in a format like popper where it's like a really grindy kind of threat in a deck that doesn't really have access to a lot of grindiness you know mono white aggro or just mono white mid-range you know and now this deck has access to a few interesting cards you know like the um three mana vampire um from the from ixalan block that like goes you can go get like however many copies of it you want <laughs> when you play it like now the the popper mono white deck has a bunch of like really resilient pieces that actually curve into each other so i at least wanted to point this card out this is another one where i'm just not sure that the power level is quite there but i don't want to deny like how grindy the card is and the fact that like you know one copy of this can turn into four total copies of this over the course of a game like fairly easily and even though it's just a 2-2 you can't count out that kind of resiliency it's not a bad looking card to me we also got to look at eye kite today this is 
that's some art right there. Um, it just looks like they, they drew a regular Drake and then like put googly eyes on it. <laughs> anyway, this is two mana. One in the blue for a 1-2 Drake with flying. Ikite gets plus two plus zero as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. So, it felt like this too, like, it really benefits from being common because it might affect the popper format. I mean, like, one opt or something, you know, literally anything that draws one extra card, like, if you brainstorm or something on your turn, then suddenly, you know, you got a 3 2 flyer that you only invested two mana into to get started. That's actually kind of good. Like, it's not Delver of Secrets or anything, but it's still a really efficiently costed, relatively high powered flyer, so long as you can draw that second card. And on some turns, it's going to be kind of like fine even if you don't draw two or more cards, because obviously you can't guarantee to do that every turn. But if you get a decent starting hand and you get a couple of ways to enable this, it can really do a lot of damage, like, pretty fast in Popper. So I've got my eye on it. Ba 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 lols. Waka waka, but anyway, here's Reprobation. Right here, this is two mana, one and white for an aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a coward creature with base power and toughness zero one. So I can't decide whether or not I like this or pacifism more. You know, it's obviously a callback to pacifism. In this way, it, you know, in this case, the creature can still block, which kind of sucks for aggressive decks. But like, you're just gonna blow right through it. Like, it might as well be removal if this if the opponent has to block with it. But unlike pacifism, this takes out like all abilities, which is really good, like making the creature into a vanilla zero one one that, like, occasionally can't block. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. And, like, the parenthetical text here also makes it clear that, like, in um, Limited uh, against Changelings, this works to, like, make them lose all their creature types except for cowards. So <laughs> it's actually really, really cool. I like that it's common, you know, again, going to be a really important piece in the Limited environment. Might be worth pointing out for that, but it's also popper playable if you want that. And the ability to make a creature lose all their abilities is pretty good. But I guess the the ultimate question is, do we have better removal in popper? Very likely, but I still think this is a pretty yoked removal spell for just two mana. But speaking of good removal spells, I wanted to put um, Reprobation and Mob kind of right next to each other on this list because they're both like really playable removal spells. But I do think that Mob is the much more playable in Popper <laughs> removal spell. And it's kind of like a Murderous Cut um, that you can play in Popper, but it's it's a little it's obviously not Murderous Cut, you know. Murderous Cut. There, imagine if that. Whew. <laughs> I would love to play Murderous Cut in Popper. There's so many decks that fill their graveyard anyway. But I don't know. It might like contend with Gurmag Angler. Like, you can't cast Murderer's Cut and Gurmag Angler in the same game, like, every game. But anyway, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Mob is very often just one mana to destroy target creature. You know, it's five mana to cast normally, four and a black, for an instant, and it says destroy target creature, but you can also just convoke it. So sometimes this will be free, <laughs> you know? And I think that's probably playable in popper decks that just play a bunch of creatures. And Mono Black Control... And obviously it's a control deck. I mean, it says it is, but it's really a mid-range deck. You know, that deck plays like, what, 10, 12 creatures or more a lot of the time? I think 16, actually. Um, so that's enough to cast a mob for a, a pretty low cost most of the time. You know, even if you're still casting this for like two mana, two mana instant speed destroy target creature at the end of your turn is like really, that is fantastic. So, And you can like block with your guys and then tap them to cast this at instant speed. That's also a cool play line. So I just like so much about mob and I love that it's common. Again, really playable in limited environment. Like you pick up every copy of this that you need or that you see and it's common. You, you just play it, but... I'm really, I'm really tempted to say that this has like real popper relevance here. This is a pretty fine looking removal spell. But oh boys, ladies and germs, we made it into the top 10 here. And I'm going to start the top 10 with a card that probably has no competitive rele relevance whatsoever. I just think it's like maybe the single coolest card of the day. <laughs> and that is Onirophage. Or one, one Onirophage? Onirophage. That's what I'm going with. This. <laughs> This is so cool. It's look at look at this art. It's four mana, three and a blue, for a one two squid illusion with flying. And whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Onirophage. Now, to me, the effect, the artwork, like everything about this card, reminds me of like a really highly played rare from back in the day. Not a specific one, but just a card that would have been printed way back in the day, and like everyone in 1996 would have played it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it looks like that kind of card. Even again, down to the art. The aesthetic to me looks like an old magic card, and so does the sort of design of it. 
It's like it looks like a rare from the dark or something, <laughs> you know. But I just really like this. It's actually got a lot of like potential power on it, <laughs> you know. You play just a couple of card draw spells, and suddenly this thing's pretty big, or if it just lasts for more than a few turns. You've got like a you know four or five flyer after a few turns, even if you don't really put any work into it. But like one prosperity, you know, one brainstorm finale, you know, the blue finale, whatever, just whatever X in a blue or double blue, whatever card draw spell you want to cast. Mind spring, I don't care. St stroke of genius. There's like a million of these to pick from, and suddenly an Irophage is freaking enormous. You know, you've just got this like 10, 10, 11, you know, eleven, twelve. Um, Squid Illusion. And that's... Mm, I want to... <laughs> this looks really Commander playable to me. And I love that it's uncommon, too, so it's not going to be like too hard to get your hands on. Just This is a fantastic card in, in, in all things design. I like this thing a lot. Also, like, quick story time before I get off this card. For a second, I was like, wait, is this like a reprint? And I just don't know it because I know I've heard this word before, seen it in print or something. So I looked up um, Onirophage MTG, and it turns out that Onirophage, uh, the only Google results this turns up for me at least, was um, an MTGO user that appears to have not really posted any results in the last year or two here, but they were posting 5.0 results as early as, again, 2018, or as late as 2018. So um, maybe Wizards kept seeing them post results and was like, man, that's a cool username. I'm going to make a card out of that username. So, like, maybe that's what they did, or maybe maybe somebody at the office was like, hey, I, I, I like cryptozoology, and have you guys ever heard of an Oneirophage? I mean, it could be. Who knows? But either way, the card is freaking boss. Actually, let's pull up a chair in blue while we're in here and talk about a couple more blue cards, because I really like Smoke Shroud in here at... I guess number nine, again, we'll call it. <laughs> this is two mana. One in a blue for an aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. And when a ninja enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Smoke Shroud from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature. So, do you remember this works with changelings and limited, but it also just works with ninjas <laughs> in your ninja commander deck, which is probably where you're going to play this. And this is probably better than it looks, you know, like, this sort of reminds me of Rancor just a little bit. You gotta do some work to get it back, and it doesn't give you, you know, such a big power boost. It only gives you half the power boost Rancor does, but it does give you, you know, an evasive ability. And I guess Rancor gives you Trample, but Flying is way more evasive than Trample is. And I like that this works in a couple of ways. Ninjutsu and Ninja in, and they just put this immediately on it, which is really, really sweet. I like that. One more cool thing about this, obviously in ninjas, you really want an evasive ability to make sure you can ninjutsu more ninjas into play, so everything about Smoke Shroud looks really good in that one specific deck, so I think it might be worth the slot, but there's also Cunning Evasion, speaking of like good ninja enchantments, this is two mana, one in the blue for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control becomes blocked, you may return it to its owner's hand. So again, ninjas, <laughs> you know, this is pretty cool for when you've ninjutsued something into play on the previous turn or something, and then if it does become blocked, you can just pop it back to your hand and jitsu it into play again later. Like, that's really good for ninjas, but this is also, I shouldn't have to tell you, like, just great for any deck that's looking to repeat enter the battlefield triggers. You know, this is a way to blink your creatures effectively, and it's an enchantment, so you can just get multiple bounces, if you will, out of it in a game, and repeat these ridiculous enter the battlefield triggers if your creatures go blocked. And if your creatures don't go blocked, then, uh... You're just winning, you know? <laughs> there's, there's always that. I mean, I guess your opponent could just elect to not block your guys, but I don't think it's going to end well for them 90% of the time, so this is going to let you repeat. A lot of really, really cool, you know, ETB triggers, so really like this for Commander, if nothing else. That's probably where it's going to see play. And just on casual tables, I got no problem, I got no qualms with casual people playing a card, so I just really like Cunning Evasion. But let's go down to green here, talk about Saddled Rhyme Stag, that's not the Best name in the world. Art's really pretty, but anyway, let's talk about the card. Two mana, one in a green for a 2-2 two, two snow elk, and it gets plus two, plus two, as long as you had another creature enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Well, this looks unassuming, doesn't it? But it's actually a two mana 4-4 four, four for Stompy. That's great. <laughs> you know, I wish so badly this was common for Popper because I I've, I could probably make the call that this would see Popper play all day, but I like this so much I put it in my top 10 for the last day at the very least. You won't see this card anywhere near any other list of mine for Modern Horizons, but still, I think that this could be the kind of card that kind of goes under the radar and is, you know, not really praised for being as powerful as it probably is because, like, Mono Green Stompy is going to play a creature on turn three, right? So if you're sad 
saddled, <laughs> excuse the, the expression, but if you don't get your Lionel Rails on turn one or something, you're saddled into this on turn two. Well, then you just get to swing for four on turn three. It seems like, it seems like Mono Green Stompy probably wants a two mana four four, right? And like on turns three and four, this is very likely going to be just that. And if you get to like turn five, you might play another creature and get the plus two plus two again, be able to swing in. But if you don't, I mean like you still got a couple of turns in with a really, really above rate creature. And really, if Mono Green Stompy and Modern doesn't win the game by turn five, they they probably didn't do their job anyway. So I think this thing might actually have a little bit of a shot. But at number six here, I guess, here's Recruit the Worthy, just one white mana for an instant with buyback three and create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. And it, uh, this is common, like, this too, popper playable. And I actually think that in, like, some sort of popper control deck, this might actually be kind of playable, like, some sort of popper blue-white control, if that's even a thing ever. Then Recruit the Worthy is, like, almost a win condition. You know, you can flash in creatures to block if that's what you want to do with it, but once you establish control of the game, then this is just, like, Creature Factory, you know? Like, for a total of eight mana in a given turn, in the late game, you can make two guys, and making two guys a turn is really, really good for control decks. So... I actually think this is great <laughs> in some ways, and I wouldn't be surprised if, like, actual modern decks played it, but I'm really not going to say that, because just buyback on a 1-1 guy, not the best thing in the world. It'll go in soldier decks in Commander, so there's there's some there's some jelly for you, Commander players. Hope you're ready for it, but honestly, in Popper, I think this has, like, the best chance of seeing competitive play, because buyback is always better than it looks, you know, like... I talked about Whispers of the Muse the other day, and that looks like it's like severely overcosted, but that card saw a lot of play back in the day. And like Capsize, if you've ever played against Capsize on the commander table, I don't have to tell you how annoying the card is. It's really freaking annoying. And it was even more annoying back in the days of like, you know, you'd actually see this in just one-on-one -on -one games. Like Capsize is such a jerk. <laughs> I, but I was that guy. I like to call myself a reformed control player. I was that guy. In 1998, I loved Capsize. And that's because these buyback cards are just way better than they look at first glance. And um, this kind of value over the course of just a few turns can be excellent. So I'm telling you, take this card a little bit more seriously than you probably are. Let's get back to Big Green. Had a few cards today here. I want to take a look at Treetop Ambusher. It's just two mana. One and a green for a 2-1 Elf Berserker with dash. One and a green. If it's been a while since Tarkir blocked for you, then you may cast this spell for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and it's returned from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. But when it attacks, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Now this is really interesting Mostly because of the creature type, but there's a bunch of stuff this does, like in Commander. This is the first time we've seen dash on a green creature. And that's actually important for, say, Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Um, you know, you just get an extra card off a of Bestiary every turn in Commander, which could actually be worth three mana if you want to make that investment. But in, like, Elves specifically, this works well with Marwyn, you know, get an extra counter on Marwyn every single turn. Um, if this If this does get to dash back to your hand... Which, remember, you can just dash it in and not attack with it, and it pops back to your hand, so it's just like an elf entered the battlefield trigger every turn, which means that it works really well with, like, Elvish Vanguard 2 in Popper specifically. Think about that, because Vanguard is Popper playable, this is Popper playable, and that kind of, you know, over a few turns value could actually be pretty decent in that format, but it works with Beast Whisperer 2 in your Commander Elves deck. There's just a lot of different things that a dash elf can do that you might not expect. So just getting it into the battlefield trigger on a few different cards every turn could actually be relevant enough to make this get a slot somewhere. But we're getting into my, like, truly my favorite stuff of the day here. So number four is Birthing Bowels. This is three mana for an artifact. You pay four and tap it to create a 2-2 colorless shapeshifter creature token with Changeling, which of course means that the token has every creature type. Now, four mana is kind of a lot for a creature factory, but I still think that this might be commander playable. Right, because even on turns where you draw dead, or just turns where you have more mana than you know what to do with, this is going to create a member of your tribe, you know, whether it's you know, elves or spiders. I could seriously consider playing this in Spider Commander. You know, I've been talking about that deck a lot over the couple, last couple of days. But, I mean, we're talking like literally any tribe in the history of magic. You, you know, you get to make a creature every single turn. And although four is kind of a steep cost to do that, three is a relatively cheap casting cost to get started. So, I think there's a, a ton to like about this. And I'm not saying it goes immediately in every single, like, Commander Tribal deck. But there are definitely more than a couple. 
that you could consider this for, and even some of the big pants tribes like elves, again, might consider something like this for all the same reasons I just mentioned. With the dash elf, you know, if you had a birthing bells in play, that could really benefit your Marwyn or your elvish vanguard, whatever. So I think this actually has a chance. <laughs> um, in Commander specifically and nowhere else, but I want to try it out, again in Spiders at the very least, but there's a ton of tribal decks that can probably make good use of this. Now, it may appear as though black was a color I wasn't super impressed by today, but it turns out black has like two of the top three cards. So, <laughs> number three is Ransack the Lab, which is really just a color-shifted strategic planning. You know, they didn't even ship the rarity, both of them are common, but this is just two mana, one and a black for sorcery. Look at the top three of your library. Put one into your hand, rest into your graveyard. So, what I like about this, obviously, is that it fuels graveyard strategies, mostly in mono black decks and decks that, you know, don't have access to a piece like strategic planning. Something like this can be really good, but especially in mono black, I think this is a, a pretty good spell in Popper specifically, you know. This kind of card selection is not something that black gets very often, especially at such a low cost. And with no investment of, like, life or sacrificing creatures and stuff like that, this is plain and simple. No extra costs outside of paying the casting cost. Get the best card out of the top three, no matter what deck you're playing. No type restrictions on what cards you can pick up. There's just an awful lot that I like about cards like this. Anticipate, strategic planning, whatever. And obviously, if you're trying to dredge, fuel graveyard strategies, whatever, this works well with that, too. So if you're playing mono black, this will help you get your Gurmag Angler, like, even faster. So there's, there's a lot of play on this card. Now, number two today in the top three is another black card, and it's Shatter Assumptions, a card which you may have assumed would be number one, but I'm going to shatter it, those assumptions, <laughs> make this number two. Just because I'm not entirely sure this really sees play, but it is kind of the card people are talking about the most, and not just because of the ridiculously good art. That is gorgeous, but anyway. It's three mana, in case you wanted to know what the card does. <laughs> one and two black for sorcery, but it's modal. Choose one. Target opponent reveals their hand and discards all colorless, non-land cards. And, or, excuse me, or, target opponent reveals their hand and discards all multicolored cards. So one or the other. And I guess this could fight off Niv-Mizzet if Niv-Mizzet is a thing, but mostly, I'm looking at this first mode here, against lots of stuff. You know, Eldrazi decks, Tron decks will drop a bunch of cards uh, when you play this, and I guess Affinity will drop a bunch of cards if they haven't already played their hand by the time you play this, but, you know, there's a bunch of artifact decks in Modern, the, um, the Foundry, you know, Thopter, Sword combo... I'm just going to put all the words and all the names of the cards together until I figure it out. But anyway, the, the Thopter Sword combo deck is like mostly artifacts. Probably going to play a bunch of eggs or whatever, and this can just make them drop a bunch of colorless stuff. So I actually think that this could have a little bit more relevance than it currently has once this set comes out and it shakes up modern just a little bit. There might be a couple of other colorless or artifact-based decks that people start playing, but just as it is, there are plenty of good targets for this card out of your sideboard. But it is fairly narrow, you know, like usually you have to be going first in game two or three to really justify getting this out of your board because it looks like it's going to work way better on the play than the draw. Um, for the most part. So, you know, like Tron can get down like a Karn if they're on the play before you can ever cast this. So, in the end, I'm not sure that it's quite worth it, but in sort of the best case scenario situations, they're not quite Christmas land, but like they're just the ceiling of the card. The ceiling of the card is very high, but the floor of the card is, is quite low, especially in a format as quick as modern. So, I'm not sure it quite gets there, but it's definitely worth looking at. But the final card of the day, the one that I thought stood above all the other cards, and you might actually have guessed it here, is Winding Way. Just two mana, one and a green for a sorcery. Choose creature or land. Reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Now, this is just a better mulch. And I like me some mulch, so... I, just for that reason, <laughs> it might end up seeing play, but it's also mostly... A better lead the Stampede. It digs one fewer cards, you know, you get four cards instead of five, but the difference between two and three mana, especially in a format like Modern or a format like Popper even, excuse me, is just enormous. <laughs> you know, lead the Stampede isn't the worst card in Elves, but it does feel like the clunkiest thing. It gives you this huge refill in the late game, but you never want to start the game with it in your hand. Three mana always feels like you're just getting bent over on the cost. So two mana is way better for a deck that just wants to fill its hand, refill its hand on like turn five with elves. So you got that. Um, but this could also go in various like creature combo decks that also want to pitch cards into their graveyard. You want to do both? 
get you somebody that can do both. You know, it's like a grizzly salvage in a way. I like that about it. But again, it's a lot like a mulch, and mulch saw tons of play back in my day. I know I'm an old gray-haired man, but mulch has remained a relatively popular card throughout its lifespan, and this is just a better version of it with really, really cool art <laughs> for what that analysis is worth. But I just really, really like how aggressively the card is costed. I love that it's available to play in modern. I love that it dumps stuff in your graveyard. It's a milkshake. We've talked about those before. It's got a lot of spread of options on what it can pick up. Just amazing card selection for green. I don't know why you wouldn't like this card. But that's it for my list. Let me know what I missed down there in the comments section. Some sort of crazy format breaking combo with some lame looking comment it could totally happen so if i missed something let me know down there in the sideboard and i guess you know if you enjoyed this spoiler season or just this video then like the video down there subscribe if you're new for more content wait really you go you want to go you always want to leave so abruptly that's so that's so mean it's cool it's cool we'll be best friends one day I hope. <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to keep supporting content like this, then check out the first link in the description. Back to my back to my call to action. I got I gotta you know have a couple of minutes to pitch to you. I apologize for that. It's the YouTuber's curse. But <laughs> if you want to support content like this, like the thing, hit the button that says like it. I guess do the thumbs up thing. Um, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications and stuff. More content coming your way if you do that. That's a you like content, that's why you visit YouTube. Um, you can also hit the first link in the description. Pre-order any of this stuff through the affiliate link at TCG Player. They sponsor my content. But they are, like, legit the cheapest place you're going to get any of this stuff. So Pre-order singles or sealed con con uh, sealed product. Oh, what was I trying to say? <laughs> sealed product from them at Takog Player. Or you can check out the Patreon if you really want to support this content. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I give you stuff. You know, dollar, dollar a month, and I'll let you vote on what videos you want to see next. Five dollars a month to get the sign card, and you get to vote. Ten dollars a month to get the vote, the sign card, deck doctor, name in the credits. There's just, there's incentives. So do the things if you want to. If you, if you don't, I'm just glad that you're here. You know, you made it all the way to this point in the video, and we made it all the way through spoiler season together as a team. And I want you to know that I appreciate that. I'm tired. You can probably tell. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to edit this video and catch a nap. I've been dead from the place. I'll catch you cats later. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Spread love and be kind.